Gotcha. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my first actual video. And what we're going to do today is take a look inside my camera bag and I'll give you a rundown of the kind of gear that I use. But before we get into this video guys, I just want to talk a little bit about the intro for the last video. A lot of people took it differently to what I intended it, but in a good way. A lot of people found it um, funny and entertaining, but I think there was, there was grabbing on to the old COVID lockdown situation where I was thinking I was bored, I was frustrated, uh, I wanted to get out, I'm going to take photos or whatever. It was more of a kick up the arse for me. It was, Dalton, just start this journey and see where it takes you. I've got no expectations for the channel. It's just something I've been thinking about for a while and I've only just plucked up the courage to do it. The intro was trying to portray those emotions, obviously looking out the window, procrastinating, spinning around in my chair, all those other things that find every excuse to not do the thing you want to do, if that makes sense. However, enough waffling. Let's actually get into the video. As you can see, the layout's changed a little bit. I'm sat behind my desk now, but I felt this is the easiest way to do it so that I can pull stuff out, put them on my desk and show you. Also, I'm probably gonna be wearing hats for the rest of the videos until we're out of the quarantine period. Quarantine hair has definitely took over and not getting a trim before all this happened was the worst decision ever. Okay, let's get this video started and kick things off with my camera bag. This is my camera bag, it's a low pro Tejo. There's not much for me to say on it. I've had it for almost two years. It's never let me down. Like all the zippers and that still work. Nothing's fallen off it. It's not got any rips or tears in it. It's a really solid, sturdy little bag. I'll show you inside it quickly. So obviously normally in there, it'd be all my camera gear and stuff. I think there's a few bits in it. In here is my junk pouch, pocket, whatever you want to call it. It's got all my charging cables, GoPro mount, multi-tool and stuff all gets crammed in there. In this front pouch is my diary and notebook. Diary obviously self-explanatory to keep me on time with things and keep me on track. Notebook is where I write down all my ideas, whether it be photography or videography. I'm a bugger for forgetting things, so as soon as I think of an idea, I write them all down in here so then I can come back to my later date. So yeah, that's pretty much my camera bag. I edit all my photos on my laptop and the laptop in question is a MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's a base model so it's got no bells and whistles, nothing's upgraded. But to be fair, it does really well at handling anything up to 4K footage. When you start getting on 4K footage, it starts to get a little bit dicey and it's a little bit slow, especially exporting it. Um, but that was to be expected with it being the base model and nothing else, nothing in terms of upgraded. I use Apple because I've obviously got an iPhone and stuff, so I can transfer my files really easy because I use AirDrop when I'm transferring photos to my phone from my laptop and stuff, and it retains the quality in that. But yeah, nothing more to say on that. Hopefully the lighting shift is not too dramatic and you can still see me. The sun was starting to beam through my window, straight in my face, and I was finding it quite difficult to talk to you guys and concentrate. What we're gonna do now is talk a little bit about my camera and lens combinations. So I'm currently filming on the Sony a7 III and the Tamron 28-75 2.8. We'll talk about the Sony a7 III first, but I don't want to get into too much detail about specific specifications and stuff like that. I just want to give you a general overview of the a7 III and my opinions. So the camera's never let me down, it's been flawless, I think it's the perfect hybrid shooter where it can shoot 10 frames per second in photo mode, I think that's number off the top of my head and it also shoots 4K video and slow motion up to 120 frames per second at 1080. So it's really versatile. The only problem I would say, I said the only problem, I said the only drawback it has is it doesn't have a tilty flippy out screen like say a Canon or some of the other brands have them as well. But that's getting really nitpicky and that's only because I'm going into say vlogging and stuff now and I'm using my phone as a monitor whereas if it had a flippy out screen I could see myself. Overall the camera is a perfect hybrid shooter as I've just said. The Tamron again is a very versatile lens. I've not really found a situation where it's either let me down or it's really struggled. It's always 
outperform my expectations. It's really sharp, it's really fast in terms of autofocus. It's almost as if it was a native lens. The only problem I do have with the Tamron, and again, this goes back to the vlogging and sometimes when I've done car interior shoots, is I feel the 28 is a little bit too close. And if it was a 24 to 70, it would be, it would be perfect. It's obviously it's very light. It's a really good lens, really good lens combination we've got going on in the minute. So my other lens is the Sony FE 1.8 50mm. And this was my first prime lens I ever bought. It was the first lens other than the kit lens that I got with the camera that I actually bought. And I loved it for a while. It was my go-to lens. I shot all my early car stuff with this. The bokeh was nice. At the time, I thought the autofocus was, was okay. It was a little bit noisy, a little bit clunky especially now when I compare it to the Tamron. It's a budget lens, I think you can pick up for like 200 quid second hand, they're really cheap, but as a starter lens, if you've ploughed a load of money into say an A7 III body or A7 II, it's a really good starter lens. You won't be disappointed if you get it. The other thing I would say is the image quality is, I'd say average. Not that many people would tell or be able to tell, I just think it's not as sharp as the Tamron, which is weird with it being a prime and the Tamron being a zoom. Yeah, those are the lens I've got at the minute. I'm gonna say I'm in the market for the 17 to 28 Tamron, and I'm also looking at replacing this with a Sigma 35 1.8. That's the main bulk of my equipment done, so now we're just gonna get into the little accessories and stuff. I'll slide this over here, this has got all my little accessories that I've collected over the last year and a half. Um, this is my backup mic. It's the Rode Video Mic Go. Um, I'm currently recording on the Rode Video Mic Pro. Nice little mics. I've got this one as a backup because that one's battery powered. So if I ever noticed that I've started recording and there's no audio, I just throw this one on there because um, I don't really carry spare batteries for mic because it's not ever died on me yet. So that's my mic. This is my portable uh, hard or solid state drive. So I back up all my files on this, so when I'm out shooting, but when this gets full, I back them up onto a separate hard drive that just stays in my house. This is the one I take with me. Uh, this is the really fast one. I think it's something ridiculous. It transfers files in literally minutes, like a full SD card, it was like, five, ten minutes. That's my hard drive. And then I've got a multitude of gorilla pod or tripods. So I've got a gorilla pod, I've got a Manfrotto pod that's holding my phone up here, which I'm using as a monitor. And then I've also got a Manfrotto tripod which the camera's currently sitting on. Um I've still undecided whether I'm gonna vlog on the gorilla pod or the mini Manfrotto tripod. Yes, there's my tripods. And dust puffer, dust puffer? Dust puffer, does exactly what it says on the tin. Gets dust off filters, off lenses, um, off sensors and stuff. I've got it cheap off Wex Photo. Yes, dust puffer. This is my dongle, so if you've got Apple products, you will know all about having random dongle. So this is a seven in one but it's got a SD and micro SD adapter in it, which is perfect for me. So this goes straight to my laptop and I transfer my files from this to my hard drive. GoPro, I rarely use this. Um, I got this a while ago when I was in Romania with work. I think it's a GoPro Hero. It's, it, was it was really cheap. I've not really used it that much. I've done a few exhaust clips and stuff for the car with it. Um, I did a few um, behind the scenes. So I've popped it on top of my camera. That's what this for. This is a cold shoe mount. And I just felt the image quality is not that good to say it's meant to be 1080, but it's not brilliant. So I think I'm going to upgrade this at some point as well. 
but I do use an occasion and that's my GoPro and that comes around with my bag as well. So this weird looking thing is my grip extension. When I was gripping my Sony, my pinky used to rest underneath the battery and I found it slightly uncomfortable after a long period. I felt my finger was getting a bit strained and stuff. So I looked at grip extensions and this is a, a Miki MKX1EM and you can pick these up off of Amazon. They're really cheap compared to the Sony equivalent which I think they're close to £100 and I can pick these up for like 40 quid, if not a bit less. The only drawback with this one is it doesn't have a battery opening compartment so when you want to change your battery you just have to take this off change your battery, put this back on. So it's a little bit more faffy changing your battery, but for the sake of an extra minute taking this off and changing your battery for the comfort, it's a no brainer for me personally. I only use it when I'm shooting for a long period of time. It's just a really nice product. So that leaves us with my filters. So I shoot all my car photos with a circle polarizer. I do that to reduce the glare and the reflections and stuff so obviously cars are just basically giant mirrors so a circle polarizer cuts down those again if you shoot in landscapes of water and stuff it'll do the same thing this one is the hoya pro one digital and i got this when i got the tamron it's a nice little package deal um these is a nice little pack i got when i got my 50 mil i bought these when i didn't really know much about um filters so the glass is not that good i know they're hoya but again i think i paid 30 quid for the whole thing i've not really used them that much i use step down rings now if i'm ever shooting with a 50 mil because pro one digital is hell of a lot better than these are in here i'm eventually going to throw them out and put all my other filters in here because it's a nice little pouch it's got pockets in them and stuff keeps your filters protected and then this little product came in the post yesterday and I didn't think it was going to be here when I was filming this video. So I've not really had any time to try it out other than to go out in the garden to see if I bought the right filter. So it's a variable ND filter and this one is by Freewell. Comes in some nice packaging, nice box that shuts with magnets and stuff. It's a really nice presentation. The filter itself goes from two stop to five stop ND filter, I don't know if you can see that. It also comes with a magnetic ring and you get this lens cap or filter cap I should say, that just sticks on there so you don't need to put your lens cap on top of this. It's got its own built in lens or filter cap I should say. So that concludes everything that's in my bag. If there's something you want to take a look at in a bit more detail, I'm going to leave links in the description below. With all that being said and done, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you lot in the next one.